Well, the rain stopped. <laughs> God, that's beautiful. Big fluffy flakes. My gosh, it's pretty. A kind of an impasse here, uh, but it's a self-imposed impasse. Um, before I, I think I might have found the tile, but before I install the tile down here on the floor, I'm going to put this hardy backer, this cement board on the wall. Uh, and then I need to cut a hole through it to um, insert the thimble for the wood stove. Uh, and I need to do that because I need to have that thimble inserted before I finish out the rest of um, the, the stone siding that, that I want on the back of this. Also, I'm kind of second and third guessing myself on how high I want to go with this. Uh, basically, I need this to be high enough, or I want this to be high enough, so that when I'm outside, I can reach up, I can pull the bottom cap off of the T for the through-the-wall kit, um, so that when I clean it, I can I can easily clean it. I, I you know more than anything, I probably want to clean it from above, I'm sure, but down below would also be a super awesome way to do it. Now, before I can install the rest of this hardy backer, I have to make that decision on where I'm going through here um, because I need to frame in uh, a square for the thimble to basically mount on where it goes through the wall. Um, so, I watched like 10 videos this morning. <laughs> I don't have a kit. I didn't buy the kit and the kit comes with instructions and I'm sure that I can go online and download the kit. But for me, a lot of times it's easier just to see how other people have done it and try and figure out what worked and what didn't work and what I need to do for me. Uh, so I'm gonna kind of work on that, I think, today. I'm gonna go pick up some more of this. I need to measure the width that I want it all to be and I need to get enough of this cement board to be able to fill that whole thing. And I'm thinking, uh, maybe if I go even with the top of the door and the top of the windows, that would probably be, probably be more than enough. Uh, because I also have to take into consideration what's on the other side of this wall. So I have that little porch out there, deck, porch. I call it a deck and then everybody calls it a porch. I call it a porch and everybody calls it a deck. <laughs> um, and, and I want to be able to walk under that thimble, right? Or, or at least not have it be out so far that it, it encumbers walking back and forth out there. All right, another, another plan that I have to bring to new. Um, and then I'm gonna pull some of the stone out over here, lay it out on the floor, and uh, get an idea of how high the coverage is going to be on the stone that I have um, when it's all said and done, because I don't think I'm gonna have enough to go up as high as I wanna go, so I'm gonna Gonna get creative and play a few games in between it that I think will look pretty nice when it's done as well. That's where we're at this morning. Right now it's about eight o'clock. Got a dusting of snow last night. I got some ice build up on the windows. If I get this wood stove installed, that'll be done. I won't have to worry about uh, the moisture build up in the cabin pretty much at all. I think I'll get some propane while I'm gone as well. Uh, just to top it off. It has been cooler lately, so I've been running the heater more than I want to, but Still staying a lot warmer than it was in the trailer. A lot warmer. <laughs> All right, I'm back. <clears throat> Let a company reach out to me uh, about trying out something that I thought would be kind of cool for you guys to see as well. I'm sure you're all familiar with the fans that go on top of wood stoves, right? Well, they have a fan that not only goes on top of a wood stove, but it ha comes with a mount for the buddy heater. So, I told them, by all means, send it to me. And I will take a look at how it works on my buddy heater. So here's the fan. It's pretty awesome. Metal construction, good metal construction. I'm going to read the instructions real quick, and then we'll put it together and see how to mount it on there.
Okay, let's see if this works. There goes the fan. No batteries required on this. So why would you want to have something like this on your boat heater? Because all of the heat goes straight up on this heater, right? And I mean, right up to the ceiling. This will push it. Oh yeah, I can feel warmth coming all the way out here now. This will push it across the room. Of course, it's still going to go up, but at least you're going to get some circulation this way. I'll give it a try over the next uh, day or so, see how it works out, see if it makes a difference. I'll let you guys know. Uh, but either way, I will have a link down below in the show notes for this item. That thing rocks, huh? And it works on any size buddy heater, it doesn't matter. I mean, I, I guess I could slide it over towards the middle when it's on high. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. We'll give that a try for a couple of days, and I'll let you guys know how it works out. Okay, so, shoveled off the deck, moved some stuff around. I, did, I gotta get another bottle of propane out of the truck. And grab the thimble. So the thimble is what mounts on the wall um, that the pipe goes through. Uh, and that's what I was talking about that I needed to have the measurements right for the thimble. But the way this is set up, because my walls are 16 inches on center, the screw holes line up perfectly all the way around. Um, the video I watched said that you slip the inside thimble over the outside thimble. And that makes sense if you see the serrated or jagged edge here on the, this thimble. Uh, so this would be the inside piece, this would be the outside piece, which I don't know if I like that on the outside, we'll see. Uh, but if doing this entire project has taught me anything, one of the things it's taught me is how to do a, a good, I got a pocket full of snow. <laughs> how to do a good Google search. So I'm gonna sit down with the phone right now and I'm gonna download um, Selkirk through the wall chimney installation instructions. Uh, because these companies really want you to succeed so they make it really easy to find the installation instructions for all of their products, generally speaking. So I'm gonna do that and then we'll come back to this and we'll see what I have to do to the wall before I can finish mounting the rest of the Duroc. It's about one o'clock and I had a plan for dinner this evening. Oh. Something that I can eat on for the next couple of days. I'm gonna do a nice big hearty beef stew and I got this uh, beef chuck cross rib roast. <coughs> I look for stew meat, and the price of stew meat is absolutely ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. So I'm going to do... Split that two. about two pounds of beef here. Leave this out in case I need more than what I have set up here. Basically I'm just going to take these chunks of meat. I'm going to sear them off. So 
so I get a nice flavor. Especially on a day like today, right, Stu? For the next couple of days? It's supposed to be warmer. Right now it's like 30 degrees outside, which is crazy warm at this time of year. Let that get nice and hot, and then I'll start searing those off. Right there on the back of that pan. All the brown and beautiful there. I cut up some potatoes and put them in here too, but we'll get those cut up after I get the last parts done here. Mixed together and feeling happy. There's an itty bitty piece here. Mm. Beef. Turn that back up again. And then I got uh, beef broth. And it was actually cheaper to buy organic than it was to buy regular, so organic it is. All right, let's take a little peek at this. I'm getting ready to go live on YouTube. That's why I have the hat on. The hat. Oh, this is just delicious. This is looking beautiful. Let me bring the camera over here and I'll show you what this looks like because I've got the cell phone working on the internet signal right now. All right, you wanna see it? It's pretty. Oh, look at that. The nice thing about stew is whatever you have left over from vegetables, you can just throw it in the pot. That is going to be delicious. Oh. Let's give this a taste. See what we got here. Mm. Oh, that's delicious. <laughs> I didn't have to add any salt or pepper to this at all. Mm. And that meat is falling apart. Mm. So this is super cool. Um, the fan has been on this buddy heater and running. Uh, since I got it about a week and a half ago um, and it is completely powered by the heat that comes off the heater and it takes a section of that heat I can feel it right here and it blows it off into this direction because generally speaking heaters like this you're going to get a little bit of heat up in the front of it and then everything else is going to go right up to the top of the ceiling so that's why my loft is always quite a bit warmer than downstairs is uh, but since I've started using this fan on here it's kind of split where the heat's going so that I don't have as much of a differential between upstairs and downstairs. Upstairs is still warmer, but um, I'll take a look at the heater right now and tell you that, or that temperature gauge. Yeah, right now it's 66 degrees upstairs and 60 degrees downstairs. So I did turn this on high when I came home. I'm down towards the end of a tank, uh, one of these five gallon bottles of propane. and. Uh, whenever you get down towards the end uh, you start to lose some of the BTU some of the heat off of it 
so I just cranked it up onto high to finish that bottle off. I got another little one that's almost empty. I'll do that too. I've gotten to the point where I'm, you know, trying to be safe here and not run out of propane in the house because there's really no excuse at this point. Uh, but it's, uh, you know, overall it's working well. This little heater is awesome, uh, or this little fan is awesome. And had I known that stuff like this existed when I first got started, this would have really gone a long way uh, to keep the trailer warm and comfortable on the inside. Thought I'd give you guys a quick update. I don't know how much I'm gonna get done this week for a video, so thought maybe we'd do a quick update on how things are going here on the property. One of the questions that came up in the live recently was about the roof. Uh, so let me show you what's going on with that. So it's shed and snow massively well. If you look at what's on the roof right now on this side, and this is, I don't know, I guess the cold side of the roof, uh, compared to what's on over here this side of the roof so not as not that much on this side as there is on the other side but this big mound of snow right here and that is all snow from where you see the drop up here um, that's all shedding off of the roof and it sheds go back over to the other side it's a little quieter over here it sheds quite a bit um, so you can also see it here. It sheds quite a bit off the edge of the roof. We're starting to get a bit of a curl. That's the first I've seen on, on the roof, but I think that's just the warmer weather that's causing that. Uh, but yeah, I mean, usually when it comes off, as you can tell, this is like, here's the here's the cabin, right? Here's the where the shed starts. Uh, but here it's quite a bit taller, right in that area right there. And that's, by the time it comes off the roof here, it shoots all the way down and lands right about here. Um, I get questions about the chickens and how they're doing with the winter weather here. We'll bounce over and see them. Good morning, ladies. Or good afternoon now. How we doing? Look like they're doing good. The black ones are feathering out quite a bit again. Um, their molt is just about over. I had some red ones that decided they were going to molt. Uh, so... <laughs> There's no way to stop that. I just, I am amazed at an animal that, that picks the middle of winter to lose its feathers. You know, that depends on the feathers for warmth. This tree right here bent over and I really never got back in there to cut it out, but it's not really hurting anything right now. So I'm just going to let it do its thing. Is that okay with you girls? Just checking to make sure. Oh, let's see if I've got anything in here. Nope, no eggs at all. So, no chickens in here right now. Uh, they're, they're sleeping in there, though, still. Um, and I've got a bale of straw right here um, that I like to throw out for the, for the ladies to play around with. I like to pick the seeds and everything out of it. But they're doing pretty good. I'm going to stop right now and throw some straw in there, and you can see them all getting crazy and having fun with it. So I just threw some compressed straw down there for them. I'll start tearing that thing up, going crazy for it. <laughs> I could watch these things all day long. Super awesome. So to give you an idea about the amount of snow that I have here on the property right now, I mean, this looks like a lot, but in reality, that's about what I have. So without running the heater in the trailer at all um, this year, because I've been in the cabin, you know, ever since last March, um, it doesn't melt the snow on the top. So that's about a foot right up there and I mean some of that's compacted down this will give you another idea I haven't cleaned off the top of that little table right there so it's probably closer to 18 inches I use the snow blower in this area and then shovel out here because there is still stuff in here that I'm grabbing um, and then I keep it clear all the way back to here 
Uh, there's the fire pit. Obviously, I'm not doing anything with that. Let me back this camera up a bit. The garden area is kicked back in snow. It is beautiful, though, isn't it? Look how pretty it is right now. It's just gorgeous. All right, there's a view of the snow on top of the scrap wood. And then that is actually a stump underneath there. But if you see these tracks here in the snow, I've got rabbits that are living uh, basically all over the place. But mainly, I think, under the trailer and under the cabin. The snowblower shed's working pretty good. I would like to... I mean, I plan on getting this so that I can store it somewhere inside. Um, so I plan on building a little bit of a shop for it. But I would... I, I wish I could have gotten this so it would go under further so I didn't have the snow build up on the handles. But it's been maintaining itself quite a bit better this year. The snow shed's on the top of the coop as well and off the top of the outhouse. So I don't have any build up really there either. Uh, and everything's staying nice and warm. got the generator charging everything up right now um, this Opes 1800 has really been nice right now we're at 63% uh, but it's I mean it's been super awesome so what I've been doing is I charge that up and then run everything off of that as opposed to having to do all of my electronic work um, with the generator running all the time and it's very peaceful doing it that way I don't know how much I've dug into this before, but as far as electrical requirements for the cabin goes, that's it. That battery right there is all of my lights in the cabin 24 seven. That charger right there, I use to alternately charge this one. Right now I'm charging this one. This is actually just something I use to top off all of my uh, lithium stuff through that 400 watt pure sine wave power inverter right there. Since this one, it's got an alarm built into it, so when it gets low, the alarm goes off and I switch over to the next battery. So right now I'm charging this one back up while this one is basically running that. These are just Optima car batteries. Um, and they're 12 volt batteries and they have a really good charge, so they last a long time. The pantry itself, I've been moving food and stuff into here. Slowly but surely getting it cleaned up. I still have a lot more to do in here as far as cleaning and organizing goes. And I, 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 I don't know that I'm sold on these shelves yet. <laughs> I lose a lot of space in there. Um, the tool storage. And I'm actually going to do this today. I'm going to grab the musical instruments and move them upstairs. Uh, but the clothes storage is fine. The tool storage is fine. It'll just, you know, I need to get some of this stuff out of here so I have room. And I guess I can frame out that section of wall right there. Um, to get uh, the hole or get ready to put the hole through the wall. Uh, so I could probably get that done between today and tomorrow. It's Monday right now. The 19th or the 18th of um, December. So Christmas next weekend. Next Monday. We're seven days away from Christmas. Uh, I don't know, like I said, how much I'm going to get done. This week. So cut it right here. Probably more than enough. inside piece here 
and it's got to have something to nail off to. So if that gets me right to there, right to there, that doesn't really matter. why I didn't measure with the stove over here it's because it doesn't matter um, and I mean I watched a lot of videos with people putting their stove underneath here measuring where they needed to make this cut but I'm gonna cut that piece of pipe coming off the stove to fit anyway right so I'm gonna have the triple wall is gonna come off here um, and then I'll have a 90 that goes right down into the stove uh, so um, that section of pipe from the 90 down to the uh, stove is adjustable. I can make, I can cut that to whatever size I need it to be. I thought that was a whole lot easier than trying to measure out where this is supposed to be exactly. So there was no way that was going to happen. <laughs> I can't even cut two 14 and a half inch shots in one, in one thing. So I need to cut this. back underneath there and then this goes back up where it's supposed to go Few more pieces of insulation around I can shove in those corners but this is this piece is going to move depending on the, the whatever I decide to go with on the outside so I wanted to be able to get that off without having to use uh, nails uh, so let me get these 
closed in. There we go. Am I going to leave this vapor barrier behind the... Here? No. Because I'm not going to take any chances with the melting. But for right now, I'm going to just go ahead and we'll cut it off or tape it off. All right, that'll do it for this week. Hope you guys have a wonderful Christmas. I am Sean in Alaska, and I'm going to have to get to editing this video here pretty quick, but I think I'm going to fix dinner first. I hope you guys have a fantastic holiday season, and we'll catch you next week taking some extra days off from work um, after Christmas. So I'm planning on starting the rest of this and getting it going. Got the whole punch through. Wasn't much this week, but I answered some questions anyway. Talk to you guys later.